On episode 39 of Chit Chat, we ask the question, what board games have some of the best box art? We'll each share five of our personal favorites, and you might be surprised with some of our choices. What won't surprise you is that we've been playing some games. We'll talk about those, too. Welcome back to Chit Chat. This is episode 39, and we've got a topic tonight. We are going to be talking about episode 5 of Game of Thrones. I'm just kidding. We're not talking about episode 5 of season 8 of Game of Thrones. We just did that for two hours. Uh, but we are going to be talking about box art. We talked about, we wanted to say, what's our top five box art? And I think a lot of us, when we came up with our list, decided we didn't know if we could come up with an actual top five. But these are five of our favorites or five examples of box art that we think are fantastic or each of us think are fantastic anyway. But before we get to any of that, Jeremy's got a winner from last episode. I do. We have a $50 gift certificate going to Adam Anderson. This is to the Broken Token. So make sure you just contact us at manversusmeeple at gmail.com. And this week we're giving away a copy of Orbis from Space Cowboys. So make your comments below and you're automatically entered to win. All right, let's get right to it. Yes, Just box jump right art. In. Box art. Ryan. Number five for me. Well, start, start and tell me how you picked your stuff. Oh, well, right? so I picked covers that I, obviously, that jumped out to me. Covers that I've seen a lot and I've just appreciated. Maybe not even, like, love the game, but just seen this box art over and over again um, and just really enjoy looking at it, even as a piece of art. These are things that I would potentially even hang on my wall as artwork. So great Western show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that's on. The... Just I just like the middle guy from Great Western. <laughs> just trailer. the one guy. Blown up. We'll see. I don't know if I want to wake up to them staring at me over my bed is all I'm saying. <laughs> they are pretty oh, scary. So, that's a scary thought. My number five many, is uh, a game called Outlive. And oh, yeah. the reason I like huh. this cover, I, first of all, it's just beautifully illustrated. I like post-apocalyptic artwork and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And this game really, um, or the cover really captures not only the feeling of the game, but also this really cool vibrant colorful post-apocalyptic world and i just i love that piece of art i would hang that piece of art on my wall Has and it show kind of it off like a last of us vibe yeah i mean it, it yeah, really last it of really us does and there's an old video game too that uh had like this ape guy and this yeah woman. i loved that I, game. I can't remember the name of the game yeah but i played that because again it had that same Planet kind of, of post-apocalyptic no, 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 no. Yeah. like last uh, i can't remember somebody what it in called. the comments will know yes please comment below but it looked just like that yeah. box cover all right, so I went through, I went way overboard. I went through 50 pages on BGG, like 5,000 <laughs> games, because I want to make sure I had a good idea of like, I try to steer away from the games I love, number one, yeah. all right? And I try to pick like iconic games, games that anyone can look at and be like, if, as long as you're a board gamer, you instantly recognize I, it. Sure. This is this particular game. And I also try to stay away from some of the games that are just hard to find, like your small world uh, in the wooden box, like the mm -hmm. Collector's Edition, the Collector's Edition War of the Ring. Oh, Collector's Edition. Yeah, I didn't throw, even think about is, that. Uh, so I try to stay away from those type of things. All right. So my number five goes all the way back to 2009. This is a Z-Man game originally. It's been re-released last year. It's called Endeavor. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever mm -hmm. seen the box cover for it, the original Endeavor? Uh, I think I, I have, but I don't so remember. I only did when I was researching this topic. So it looks like an old brown satchel, right? And the satchels kind of open up. You see like the, the straps hang mm -hmm. off the side. And inside you can peer like these rolled maps. And then it's got this really cool like belt across the side that has an embossed ship on it. But for 2009, like the artwork on that thing was really, really So it was very literal? It's like, very literal, it looked yeah. like that. But the moment you pick it up, you, you feel like Indiana Jones. You want to look on the backside mm -hmm. and say, what's this game about? Because most of the box cutter, uh, covers just depicted art of some sort. And this one really gave you the flavor of like doing an adventure. So if you guys haven't seen the original box cover for Endeavor 2009, go check it out. The new one's really cool, too, because it looks like a chest. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a larger box. But that old cover is just fantastic. When when people can pull that off, when, you, when you're literal and you try to create something that looks like an actual thing. Yeah. If you pull it off, it's good. Yeah. But oftentimes people try that and they don't hit the mark and yeah. it's not so great, but that yeah. is a good example. All right, so I put in about 1,000 times less effort <laughs> in, in figuring mine out, but I was thinking about this and what pops off to me off the shelf are games that really stand out, like Ryan was saying. And for me, a lot of them fall into the category of kind of stark, Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to go with five white boxes yeah. <laughs> with small graphic sure. elements. Yeah. Um, but there is some of that. So, and, and I don't, none, none of my favorite games, like a lot of the Euros we play are not on the list because so many of them, even though they hold a place in my heart and they, I like the art or appreciate it, it doesn't jump out to me. And a lot of those kind of blend together. So anyway, 
My number five is actually Euro in mechanics, but it's from Renegade, and that's Passing Through Petra. Oh, yeah. uh, a game that's pretty good. It's probably not one of my top games, but the artwork from the box is super cool. I remember yeah. from the very first time we saw it, it's got this cool use of the geography or the landscape in front, and you're peering through yeah. to, yeah, we have it on the wall oh, somewhere, a, yeah. uh, to uh, a lot of people kind of walking down the path. So it, it kind of pays homage to Euro boxes, yeah. but it's done in a really cool perspective way. Yeah, yeah. Very cool cover. Very interesting. So I I am a sucker for not even knowing what a game is about sometimes and just going off oh, the yeah. box, uh, especially earlier on when I wasn't sure what I liked yet. I was just like, ooh, I like that art, so I'm going to take it. So I focused mine around games that I bought because of the because box of art. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my my first one that I can remember, so that's my my top, my number five is going to be Takedo. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, which is a game I've ac I've also played. Not all these games are games <laughs> that I've played yet. So um, yeah, Takedo, uh, gorgeous cover has the Apple esque vibe to yep. it, um, and the artwork throughout the game is great. But the cover is really nice. I like it's one that I have. You know, will have front faced on my shelves from yeah. time to time. That's so. a good one. Yeah, that was great. on my short list of white boxes. That almost yeah. <laughs> made it onto my list too. All right, four. Number four for me is Feudum, and I picked oh, this because this is just, choice. it is a crazy cover. It is, the color scheme is insane. The artwork looks like something from an Adult Swim cartoon. Yep. Yeah. Like, this does not look like the heavy Euro board game that it is. And oh. the artwork for the whole game is like this. But if you ever wanted a representation of what it's like to play the game, look at the Feudum cover. I mean, there's just, like, weird monsters and people, and it's just, it's a crazy amount of things happening on that cover. But I love the art style. Yeah, very, yeah. very gorgeous. Yeah, it really sold me on the game. Uh, going with your idea about Takedo, I do like the white box covers. I think it's really, really cool when you use just an image and not so much text with it. Time Stories is one of those. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at white box covers, I looked at Takedo. I looked at When I Dream, which is another game that has like a bed and mm -hmm. you have the dream coming mm -hmm. up out of the bed. But Time Stories, the moment that cover came out, first time I saw it, thought it was a helmet. Like I thought it was an, an yeah, astronaut's like an helmet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's good because it makes you, as a uh, possible consumer, flip it over to see what's on the other side. And then once you start playing the game, even after your first play, you're like, I now know what this is. And it's so evocative of the game. Mm. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. So my number four, much like Jeremy's, is Time Stories. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I will add one thing to everything he just said, because all of that is exactly the reason I put it on there. I literally bought Time Stories because of the cover. Yeah. Like, I didn't know much about it, but that box, particularly at the time that came out, it just seemed so incredibly stark compared to every other game out there. Um, but one other thing that that game did that a lot of games weren't doing then, but more and more are now, is I think doesn't that use a spot gloss on mm -hmm. it as well? It does on the time capsule. Yeah, so it has that going on for it too. So the white is kind of matte, and then that time capsule is very shiny with the spot gloss. And more and more people are doing that. I mm -hmm. mean, I really like seeing that in not only the boxes, but even on some of the components inside oh, the yeah. games these yeah. days. Yeah. But yeah, time stories. That is my one. Let's see. Yeah, uh, your one white box. <laughs> my half of uh, entries your for most, white box. Your most white box. It's my. It's my most white box. <laughs> All right, so this next one was one that I, I swear I was looking at for so long, and I got it, and I never actually played it before I passed it along. So it's a little bit of a weird one, but photosynthesis. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. Gorgeous box, like yep. oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Sat front yep. face the whole time. Uh, the main reason I didn't get around to playing it had nothing to do with anything other than I, the, my play group wasn't going to like it once I got it and saw what it was about. And so I was waiting and waiting and waiting to try it out and eventually just decided to let someone else enjoy it. But uh, the covers phenomenal yeah. it's very beautiful yeah, yeah. cool font to yeah. choice on that mm -hmm. well, my next one is a game that i've never played want to play it but absolutely love this cover it's the ancient world from uh red raven games new one or the old one the you know i actually like both of them but i'm staying the old one because okay. i love that just love that cover i mean ryan lockett's art is always very good yeah but something about the ancient world it's just a very evocative cover it just you want to explore that world it's kind of misty and there's a giant colossus in the background and 
it just looks really, really cool. Yeah. If that was a video game cover, I would play that video game. I yeah, mean, it's just a really cool looking thing. The thing about his art and his games, obviously, very narrative. They tell stories. And his box covers, particularly that one, does tell a story. You see all these little things. You're like, oh, I wonder what's the deal with that Colossus and how that's going to show up in the game or yeah. something like that. All right, my number three, I actually want to explain why I like this one so much. <laughs> uh, a lot of the times uh, I will make a purchase like you guys based on the artwork alone, mm -hmm. right? Um, very rarely do I look at like the, the, the name of the game or how they do the font for the logo, but this one stands out 100%. It's from Certifiable Studios. It's called Who Goes There? Mm. And the moment you look at this box, um, it's based off of John Carpenter's The Thing. It's mostly black and white. Uh, all the black is done with the tentacles that go up the side, so you have like the Cthulhu vibe on the outside. You have snow kind of coming in that gives the light behind it, and you have the, the, um, the Arctic base in the background. But what's so striking about it is who goes there, which is yeah. stacked on the box. And it's huge, <laughs> and it's just a normal font. There's nothing special about the logo, but it's so beautiful and so striking. It's mm -hmm. just a really, really awesome cover. Those guys know how to do art. For yeah, sure. yeah. They, those guys can't do any wrong in my book that that's another one not the normal cover but again because it was so stark white i didn't put they have a collector's edition cover that's like mostly white with just like, like blood trace blood trace yeah, and yeah. like think i think the creature like wrapped around the side mm -hmm. of the box so it's very abstract in yeah. a way but yeah they they know what they're doing yeah. for sure completely in contrasting to that and contrasting to what i think you guys will find my typical tastes are my number three is lisboa like Right? It's an interesting cover. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is Ian O'Toole, and I, there's something about that cover. It completely falls out of my wheelhouse in terms of the kind of art that I would typically like. But there's something about the way Lisboa looks, and the cover goes all the way through to the board itself. Uh -huh. It is one of the most unique-looking board game boxes mm -hmm. out there, and probably the most Euro-y, for sure, of any of the games that I have on my list. And the most blue. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it, a blue it's, game. it's not super striking, but there's something that that looks like it was a piece of art done years, like hundreds of years ago. It doesn't yeah. look like anything that was done today, and it looks yeah. like legit in that respect. So, yeah. so my number three is also the Ancient World. Oh really? Oh, wow! But that's... the new one, mainly because I I backed it because I saw the cover. I mean, I was just I'd been eyeballing it when he first tweeted out about that he was redoing it and I I didn't know anything about the game again that was one that just hit my list I'm watch, I'm waiting for it to go live it doesn't hurt that it's Ryan Lockett either mm -hmm. behind that because I love anything that they put out pretty much and I love his art but the cover the new cover is wonderful and it got yeah. me instantly interested so. it's funny because I went back and forth of if I should talk <laughs> about the old one or the new one because <laughs> they're different but they're both very good yes yeah two all right, number two for me is Everdell. And I like this cover because, I mean, first of all, it does, like, this game is beautiful. If you've played Everdell, you'll, like, it's just a gorgeous game. And it looks like the cover to, like, uh, one of those, what was it, Riverdell books or whatever, that where all the animals are, like, whatever, alive. Like, it looks like uh, you're going on a narrative adventure. Like, you've got the wooden character transposed with this giant forest. And it just, it's very inviting. Like, you really want to open the box like you talked about mm -hmm. and get in there and just find out what's going on in this game. Because the world building is just right there in the front cover. Yeah, slip cover is really nice too. Oh yeah, well the, that slip cover is, that is gorgeous. That is a cool presentation. Yeah. I think everyone also is kind of a sucker for anthropomorphic animals. Like, you put a badger in a suit, and everyone yeah, wants to check it out. The yeah. Red Wall. That's what those books. I love yeah. those books when I was a kid. So I think that there's a little bit of that that appeals to me here. Sure. Uh, my number two, the logo speaks for itself. It's not even the logo of the game. It's artwork on the front of the game, and that's the Seventh Continent. Yeah. yeah I knew. Uh, that I, game is just. It's mostly a stark black box. However, when you look closely, it's burnt leather. Like there's leather oh. that you see behind it. Mm -hmm. And then you see the logo, which is, I don't know what this thing is. I actually reached out to Sirius Pulp to figure out what it was, but it, you can look at it and you can see like a weird skull. You can see like an alligator head. You can see like a guy holding a dagger. You can see two hands going up. It's up for interpretation. I'm not sure what it means, but the logo itself on there, it's gold. However, it's a black gold. And depending on how you move the box, it either looks gold or it looks blackish gold, moving on, on how you move that logo. It's just very evocative of, of, of what you're about to experience. It's, it's an exploration game, and it's just beautiful. Like, it's a beautiful, beautiful box. It sounds cover. like you spent far too long 
staring lovingly into this I, box. Well, that cover. box, no, it's he's not wrong. It's one of the no, few, no, it is. It's awesome. It's looking. one of the few box covers that I have on my shelf that's yeah. facing forward because it's just so cool looking. Yeah, you mm -hmm. could stare at that image for days and try to pick out all the little symbols and everything. Yeah, very neat. All right, my number two, also contrasting to that, is Whistle Stop. And Whistle Stop, I remember when it first came out, we looked at it, and it too was very different at the time. Very, very clean design, and something that I felt at the time anyway, and still now, is reminiscent of like an app. Like mm -hmm. it feels like some sort of mobile game, like mm -hmm. when you look at the artwork on the front. And it was just, had that Apple thing going on, although it wasn't stark white, it was just really fresh colors. And crisp. Yeah, very crisp compared to a lot of board games on the market. So. And I, it's just, it's it's a really interesting thing to look at. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of detail there. It's not like it tells a story like some of the other ones we've talked about, obviously. But it's just a clean, appealing box. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Because Ryan and I clearly spend too much time together. Mine is also Everdell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's weird because I remember clearly that that game stuck out to me in the middle of our very first Kickstarter with Colossal because it launched the same day as Western Legends and I was so busy with Western Legends and I saw Everdell and I was like, ooh, what's that over there? I'm going to take a second and break away from dealing with our campaign to go look at that. And uh, again, I didn't know much about it. I just, I really liked the way it looked and then, you know, I typically will back things and just kind of let them be and then it showed up and it was also a wonderful game, so. Yeah, yeah. The, the artwork in that game also follows through into the components mm -hmm. and yeah. into the art within the game. Like the artwork and the cards is just yeah. really, well, really well Well, and done. the artists made um, like wallpaper backgrounds available to all the back backers and yeah. you could either have it with a calendar or not for your desktop background and I totally had those going that yeah. whole first year after it came out. So it was yeah. really, really nice. Number one. My number one is, it is. Uh, actually Scythe. And the reason I chose Scythe, uh, whether, oh. regardless of the game itself, I love the artist that did the cover for Scythe. I've followed his work for years before Scythe was even a thing, he was doing this artwork where he would take, you know, the, like old historical photos and add in um, steam tech and diesel mechs and all this crazy stuff. And I, I've always liked that juxtaposition that happens in that in those images. And I've always wanted that artwork just to have that artwork. And so when that game Scythe came out, that was what drew me to Scythe, not Stagmire, not anything else. Just wanted to play a game in that world. That was created through all these different paintings and so i had that has to be my number one scythe is beautiful all right my number one in the moment you yeah. see this game you're going to be like i know exactly what that is and that's dead of winter yeah. that cover is so good you could take the logo out of that and put it 150 feet away blown up and everybody would look at it and be like i know what that game is mm -hmm. it's a broken mirror that has all these different faces mm -hmm. around it the logo is done in snow with blood on it and it just the moment you see that you're like what is going on in this game like and then once you realize it's kind of like a cooperative, a little bit of a deduction game, it's just purely evocative of what that game is. Love that cover. It's, it I did, I did not list. see that coming. Me neither. It's, it's a good it cover. Definitely, it definitely is one that I looked at and I go, oh yeah, I like that cover. But it's I always iconic. Cover, like, but yeah, it is. Like it's absolutely iconic. It like. That's yeah. a good reason to pick it for sure. You know, it's interesting. This is the first time we've ever done one of these lists where it's been really difficult. I mean, aside from Ryan and Kira, apparently, to kind of guess at what might be on each other's lists. So anyway, my number one, uh, this is an example of an artist and all of his work, but I'm narrowing it down to Raiders of the North Sea uh, and the Miko. I love his art and something about his box covers. And I'm talking about even just a standard box cover for Raiders of the North Sea, where they're all on that ship, the, the mast mm -hmm. of the ship is right dead center and they're all kind of leaning off of it. But also, if you've ever seen the collector's edition of the box, you have the, the big box, yeah, right? Yeah. It's so awesome. These are just two people staring at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They also do a great job of using all of his character art all around the edges of the box. So you really, you just, you see all this expression as, we, as, as unique and interesting as his art is. There's a lot of expression in the faces of them that you don't get in a lot of other games. Like mm -hmm. a lot of, any Euro, classic Euro, there's a guy, and they're usually emotionless expressions, so you don't really... Something kind of smells bad. It doesn't, <laughs> grab, <laughs> it doesn't grab you in. But these, yeah. you know, you see this anger and this, you know, this torment yeah. in all these faces. I really love his art, so anything he does. But Raiders of the North Sea is the example anyway. Perfect. All right, so my number one is probably my most recent, not a rival, but purchase specifically off the cover. I have not played it yet. I have read the rules, so I'm ready to play it, but uh, it's the Forgotten City, which I picked up. It was an Essen release, 
I got it at BGG Con because he only had a few of them and I kept, his booth was right across from where I was and I kept walking over and looking at it over and over and I was like, I just, and I looked at the back and I said, yeah, that looks okay. I want whatever is in this box. It's so pretty. It's a gorgeous cover. Um, and I don't know that it's a game a lot of people know about, hmm. so I'm really yeah. looking forward to playing it. I don't know it, anything about the game, gorgeous. but I, I've seen that cover pop up in so many different places, and every time I'm like, man, What's pretty? what is yeah, that? What is that game? It just looks Guess amazing. Guess we're going to have to play it. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go around the table quickly about what we've been playing. Well, I guess um, we did finally finish our Lord of the Rings Journeys of the Middle Earth campaign, yeah. so people well. that are tired of hearing us talk about it. Too bad. You're going to talk about well, it more. It might be the last time we talk about it, but... For a little um, while, anyway. For a little while. We did play that, um, and that was that was satisfying to, to get through the end of that, and we'll save our, I think, final opinions maybe for a follow-up uh, review. But it was a good experience overall, and I had a, just a great time playing that. I'm enjoying getting to play through some of these story games all the way through. Like, we played Betrayal yeah. earlier, and now we're playing Middle Earth, and play we played Detective, Detective yeah. so... It's good to actually be able to finish these games. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. They're long. They're lengthy, yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. uh, my new passion is Die Tavernen M. M. Tiefenthal, mm -hmm. which is by Schmidt Games. It's being brought over to North the Star. U.S. by North Star Games. It is by Wolfgang Warsh, who's on a roll right now. It is a uh, dice drafting um, worker no placement kind of game. Deck, deck building a little uh, bit. Deck building game that you're building a tavern, and you have, all the, you have this board in front of you where all these components fit together like a puzzle and you're flipping them over to upgrade them. Um, and it has five different modules, so you can start off with the base game, which is pretty basic. Uh, but once you get into the five different modules, there's all kinds of different ways to score points. It's a really, really, really solid game. I'll say the way that those components come together to make that bar is maybe one of the most satisfying things, it's regardless awesome. of the gameplay, it's just awesome. fitting all those pieces in there. Yeah, it's, putting it's the tough. tiles together in the player board, you, yeah. I just sit there and slide them around <laughs> and it feels just right. Like mm -hmm. they nailed in terms of the size and everything on yeah. that. I haven't played it, but I definitely want to. It looks It's great. really good. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, I've played... A uh, little bit more Nagaraja. Ryan and I uh, yeah. played Nagaraja on the stream live stream last week, and I've had a chance to play it a couple more times since then. We've talked about this before. We liked it ever since it came out at Gen Con last year. Uh, I did get it to the table with my oldest son, who, like my sons, notoriously never play board games with me. Um, but he played it, and he liked it. He, in fact, he asked me the other night, hey, could we play that with Spencer, my youngest son, three-player, and I said, unfortunately, we can't because <laughs> it's only a two-player game. He's like, oh. So I lost my opportunity there. Other than that, uh, I've been playing a video game, uh, an old one, Borderlands 2. Oh, I've, yeah. Oh, wow. I, Borderlands, yeah. Borderlands 3 was announced recently. And as you, probably, you guys probably know, we're all video game fans here as well. Uh, so I actually introduced Alicia to Borderlands 2. And she's taken to it pretty well. Uh, so we're... We've played through that quite a bit together. And David's now married. So oh, that's congratulations. right. Elisha yeah. is now, I can yeah. officially call her my wife. We're, we are married. That's really nice. Yeah, so we decided <laughs> to play Borderlands 2 together. I love it. I love as, Borderlands. As you do. I need to break that right. out and get played, get it played too. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I went ahead and got my own copy of Res Arcana because I really oh. liked it and I, I know it's going to be hard to borrow. So um, mm -hmm. I, I got a copy for home and I, I actually taught it to a friend of mine and my husband yesterday and uh, they really liked it. They're ready to get it. That's a game that having played it, definitely helps huge oh, advantage, yeah. uh, huge Gigantically. advantage. Yeah. and uh even saying that one of them picked it up better than the other so that was nice but what i'm really happy about is we finally gotten back to time stories yeah, we and, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah i'm looking forward to playing the next one uh, what was the one we just played uh, called? the expedition one expedition. yeah operation endurance operation or expedition endurance yeah, that yeah that's yeah. the one good we have four left. It was, yeah, it was good. It was it was one of my favorites so far. Yeah. Honestly, it was really mm -hmm. good. I uh, really enjoyed it. And then on top of it, just kind of this is the first time we played since we got all the clear components. Yeah. For the game, so um, uh, it looks it also looks, it looks just cool. really cool mm -hmm. to play. So that's very cool. Sweet. Well, that is it for episode 39? 39. 39. Yeah, wow. 39 of Chit Chat. Man, we're all coming up to number 40 here pretty soon. So remember, comment below at your chance to win Orbis and. Also, go check out all the great products that Broken Token, our sponsor. We couldn't be doing this show without them, and we'll see you next time. Well, that's another episode of Chit Chat in the Bag. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out another one, there's probably one right over here in the bottom left-hand corner, or probably your right-hand corner. Whatever corner, we have something to click on, so click on one of these things, and good things will happen.